I just spent weeks slogging through different tools to set up Kubernetes clusters on my local workstation. In this video, I'm going to show you the good, the bad, and the... Ugh. Hi, I'm Steve. Are you trying to get a Kubernetes cluster set up in your local environment? Maybe you've already got Docker desktop going, but you need something a little bit more full featured that'll give you multiple nodes or multiple clusters, or you just need to check in your configuration into your Git repository. Keep watching. Let's get started with Docker desktop since we already got that installed. Now I'm sure you notice when you go into the preferences, there's a Kubernetes tab here. We can simply enable Kubernetes and voila, we've got our own Kubernetes cluster. How wonderful. Except there is an issue that it does take uh, quite a bit of time for Docker to get that bad boy started. Um, I will use my magic powers, of course, to speed this up. The other thing you're gonna find with Docker, it's fully a, a functional Kubernetes cluster but you can't use it's a single node cluster and you can only ever have one cluster running at a time so you no cluster per project or anything like that so we're going to use this ping pong app i built that just calls back and forth to different apps um, as you can see it's got a few manifests that we'll be using auth.yaml kates.yaml and instance.yaml so first let's make sure our cluster is up and there it is, there's our control plane and our pods. And first we'll deploy our auth.yaml that creates our permissions and such. Um, just make sure that we have this here, there it is. And lastly, we'll apply all our pods in our kates.yaml. And now I wanna show you a tool I've gotten very fond of. It's called Stern, wonk, wonk, wonk. It's, uh, it's a play on the name because it tails all the logs um, to your console, the, all the logs coming from the various pods that are running in your cluster. So to call it, it's just stern, the name of your container, and you pass it the namespace and you'll see all your logs. The next tool on our list to use is Minikube. Minikube is a great tool. It's, uh, I believe, the oldest on our list. Um, maybe the most mature. It's got beautiful icons I just absolutely love. The um, It's got a lot of features that allows you to save your configurations. Uh, you can do multiple clusters, uh, multiple nodes. Very full set of tools. So we've got our control plane and now we will deploy our app to Minikube. And we'll watch it kind of pinging and ponging back and forth. As you can see, they are running. But you'll see they're all running on the same node. So this time, we're going to create a new one, a three node cluster called Test Cluster. And I'll speed this up because Minikube is not fast. But now, when we look at the nodes, we have three different nodes. So we'll deploy our app. And when we see where our pods are running, each one of them is running on a separate node. And lastly, let's talk about a tool from a group that doesn't care at all about naming, K3D. Now, K3D is a set of tools for um, deploying K3S, a um, implementation of Kubernetes by the Rancher group. And as you can see, K3D is all about clusters. It's about um, managing clusters, creating clusters, deleting clusters, starting and stopping them. Um, we're gonna run help and is Another thing you can see here, there's a lot of options. These can actually all be caught into a configuration file and set in your environment. But we have options. What I'm looking at is options for server nodes and agent nodes.
Now your server nodes are the nodes, they're your master nodes and they serve up APIs. They can also run your containers. Now I'm running at this startup, this crate here in real time and as you can see, it will start up much quicker than Minikube or Docker Desktop. That's very satisfying. Uh, tools for listing the cluster here. As you can see, we only have the single cluster. And if we look at our nodes, uh, we deployed a single node. Next, let's create a multi-node cluster in K3D. Um, we're gonna use the server and the agent flags. Looks like I forgot to give it a name. We'll do that. And I am speeding this one up. Um, you'll just have to trust me that it does in fact run quite a lot faster than Minikube. And of course, Stalker Desktop does not have the ability to run a multi-node cluster. So now we've got our multi-node cluster built. As you can see, we have multiple clusters. And if we call our nodes, you'll see that in fact, we have six different nodes in this case. So we'll deploy our app. And then if we call our pods, you'll find our pods are themselves uh, deployed to the various different nodes that we created. Lastly, I will um, deploy this last manifest that um, creates additional instances. It actually creates six instances and in this case, again, it gets spread out across all instances. And if we tail that, we will see all six of our pods running on different nodes, pinging and ponging back. And there you have it. Three tools for creating local Kubernetes clusters. Mash that beautiful ruby red subscribe button at the bottom of your screen. And let me know what you think in the comments.